So this is going to be an unboxing for the Epilogue Sidecar. I just got the package in today. Uh, and then full disclosure, I did not pay for this unit. Epilogue actually sent me this sample uh, for me to try out. And I'm actually not even keeping it. Uh, I have to send it back to them after I'm done testing it out. So uh, again, I'm not being paid to review this. And nor do I get to keep it. So. You're gonna get my honest opinion on the uh, product or dev kit as they're calling it for now. And let's uh, open it up. All right, so it's just uh, mailed to me in this like simple package. Uh, it's got this anti-static bubble wrap sheet. Got a little package for the wiring and it looks like a company sticker. Let's gonna move this out of the way. And let's uh, focus on what's inside this little uh, pouch here with the wires. Let's just get this out. All right. Let's get the uh, boring stuff out of the way. Or I guess not really boring, but here's a little company sticker that uh, they're giving me. Since I'm not keeping it, uh, I won't be putting it on my car. But. It is right here if you are interested in seeing it. And then, just drop the wires. And these are the wires that work with the system. Looks like we've got a fairly long length of this gray wire. And this will essentially start from where your rear view mirror is all the way down to the area underneath your steering wheel uh, where your gas and brake pedal are. And this will just hook up underneath. And my assumption is this is what powers the actual unit. Um, yeah, this just sticks in the OBD2 port and then should sneak its way all the way up to the rear view mirror area. And if you go in a, on Epilogue's website, they actually show an installation video on how to install it all. Uh, I'll be doing the same thing, but for now, this will be just the unboxing video. And on this end of the wiring harness, uh, this will likely go to the camera that's going to be uh, in your rear view mirror area. And then this will be the wire that'll bypass the camera, the, the stock cable. I'll show it all on my car when, when I get there. And this is going to be the connector that goes into the actual unit itself. If it focuses okay for y'all. Yeah. Um, I don't want this to be a comparison video to uh, OpenPilot or Comma.ai, but I was very relieved to find no USB cables in this kit. So that's, uh, you know, even for a dev kit, I hope they keep it that way because USB ain't the jam. Cool, so that's the wiring. And then moving on to the unit itself, uh, it's in this uh, anti static bubble wrap. Open it up. I will say, even though it is just the um, the dev kit that they're sending out as a sample, uh, probably would have been good to maybe provide some protective film over the lenses of the unit. Um, and there's nothing really sharp in here, but you never know. It could be just an edge of the foil that could maybe possibly scratch the lens. But again, this is a dev unit. Uh, this is not what you're going to be seeing in the packaging that will come out when Epilogue starts shipping them out to people in the retail space. And so this is just the, the dev unit. And then to start off in the front, um, this is going to be the camera that's going to be facing the road. They've only got one camera. Um, and I'm assuming it's going to be wide angle, but we're, we'll find out later on when I install it in the car. And um, in the 
back here, we see the driver monitor camera. So this is gonna be the camera that's gonna be um, recording you. Or maybe not recording. Actually, I don't know what their function, what their function is going to be, but this is going to this is the camera that's going to face you as a driver, and it's going to make sure that you're paying paying attention to the road. And I can assume that this is an infrared LED, so that uh, when you are driving at night, uh, it doesn't need any external light to actually see uh, which way you're facing. Got some venting over here, and venting on the other side. Uh, but what you, what you will notice is that the driver monitor camera is only on one side, so uh, this unit is going to be only usable for people in the U.S. for now. Uh, I mean, I'm sure they could easily make another SKU uh, where they flip the camera over. I mean, it, it'll be just a simple mirror for the model itself, but again, these are just dev units, so I mean, I, I think it's understandable to, to have just one SKU for now. But interesting uh, honeycomb pattern, should be good airflow for the unit. And then underneath here, uh, you're, you'll see a speaker. Uh, I'm assuming that'll be simple chimes from the system itself. It'd be really interesting to find out what, what, the, what that sounds like. And this, will, this cutout here is just for the, the, the mirror stock where the unit will be installed. And what else can we talk about here? Um, obviously it's 3D printed. Um, I don't know what material it is. Um, I can assume it's not PLA. Uh, PLA will not withstand any of the, the heat you, you have from the car. So it's probably something like ABS or ASA. I, I don't think they would use, I don't think they would use PETG. I think that'd be a little too weak even for the car. And just based on the layer lines that are cutting, cutting across this way, it's very likely that they, they had the model printed with this side down and then printing layer by layer by layer. And you can see that in some of the textures there. And then they even had what looks like a bunch of support material on this area because this these little white specks are essentially where the, the plastic kind of stuck to the model and then they were able to take off the support material. Actually, there's even some support material still on here. Um, yeah, so you can see some of the support material still there. Again, just a dev unit, so that can be forgiven. Um, but again, it, it's really great to see how low profile the unit is. Um, it's very likely you won't even see the bottom of this when you're looking at it from, a, from the driver's perspective because the, the mirror will actually be sitting around here, I believe. Um, I'll, I'll have to see once I have it installed, but uh, I'm really excited to not have a cell phone screen just sticking, uh, you know, just stuck to my windshield. So I'm really excited to try this out and hoping everything goes well. And inside the unit, um, first, I'll kind of go over some of the attachment points. It looks like they've just uh, mimicked the attachment points that are already found in my RAV4 so that um, when this unit installed, there's, there's, no, there's no screwdrivers or anything needed. They'll just simply clip in the same way the, the stock clamshell will clip in as well too. And I mean, for something so big, it, it is quite interesting how small the actual components are. Uh, you've got the, the compute here. I believe it's a, an N NVIDIA a TX2 NX, I believe. Um, and it, it, it should provide enough horsepower for what they're doing. Uh, I'm assuming this is GPS. Here's one of the cameras here. This is the driver side camera. You'll see two cables. This is probably for the data and power. And you also got this other cable here for the infrared. And you've got the front facing camera. And it's also connected with uh, data and power cables. Got really small wires in there. And yeah, again, this is the, the heat sink for the compute unit. And down below here, it might be hard to see on camera, but it looks like there is an antenna unit that's attached to the uh, connector for the, the board. 
And what is really fascinating is um, I don't know what actual model camera they're using, but the fact that it's not connected to the actual board physically and instead um, connected using these data wires uh, is really neat because, uh, again, I don't want this to be a comparison video to Kama, but uh, I've always wished that they could have the cameras um, further away from the unit so that you can have more options of where you want the cameras to be. And this is kind of uh, eye-opening to find out that, hey, like if you have a camera that has high definition, etc., cetera, um, it doesn't need to be directly mounted to the board. So um, it's really fascinating to me. And yeah, so there's a little uh, fan connect down there. We've also got the antenna connector down there. And it definitely is probably Wi-Fi. This little guy right here is also mirrored on the heatsink itself. So it is probably the Wi-Fi for it. And I'll put this down right here and bring back the cables. And yeah, so this connector here is what's gonna be uh, allowing your car to communicate and power the unit. Again, uh, this guy will attach to the connector that goes down uh, near your gas and brake pedals. And then it'll also intercept the data and then also be able to send data to the car using the, uh, the stock camera that's built into your car. And it'll just simply snap into place just like that. Again, I'm really happy that they're not using USB. Um, if you've been following my channel, you'll know that my previous uh, comma unit um, died and my assumption is actually it's, it's probably the USB connector and it is really nice to see that they're using a more robust looking connection here. So really happy about that. And yeah, so that'll be the unboxing for the unit. Uh, I'll be installing it in my car very soon. Uh, and then hopefully I'll get some test drives to give some opinions and, uh, and share my experiences with this neat little packaged uh, self-driving assist system. So, yeah, really excited. Hope you all are excited too. I put that survey out and, and uh, many of you voted that I uh, review this unit and luckily it all pulled through. So, uh, stay in touch you know if you haven't subscribed subscribe already and uh make sure you don't miss any of the videos so this should be exciting to try out and see you all in the next one